for the people. CJSR 88.5 Hip Hop Buffet. We are scrambling. But we're on point now. We have a uh, special guest in the studio tonight. I have alluded to this interview, except the only issue with this now is it's a, a week early. <laughs> <laughs> so people go. are tuning in next week. Um, they should be listening right now. Yeah, hopefully they're listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> we have... uh being Cali, that's the but, but things uh, changed up until I'm here in the city of Olympia, YEG. I'm chilling with you guys. Excellent. Uh, obviously, for the people who don't who don't recognize that voice, shame on you. Damn. The uh, one and only Arlo Mavericks in the studio, and we are also joined with uh, K Riz and uh, Uzi La. That's right. You guys just roll as a family, just just a yeah. pack. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how we get music done as well, too. It's all it's all in the family, you know. Well, that's the best way on the on the ride home. Compose a song. Yeah. Pump out a beat. Yeah. <laughs> it's more than possible, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, obviously, here for the main reason is the highly anticipated, long overdue <laughs> solo debut album. The Detox of Edmonton. The Detox of Edmonton. It's no longer maybe tomorrow, it's here and now. <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Maybe today became a reality. <laughs> We have a lot to talk about. We were, uh, me and the architect were upstairs discussing the finer points of the album, and we have some opinions to share, we have some questions to ask, and uh, we're assuming that you have all the answers that we're looking for. I would hope I have the answers for, for what you're looking for. You know? <laughs> so, did. no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that, that uh, playing the role that I played uh, within the project, I would hope that I have the answers. But at the same time, though, I don't know what questions you're going to ask, so I guess uh, we're both on the spot right now. <laughs> I guess that's the beauty of doing these like blind interviews kind of thing. I got my notepad. Dang, you got a notepad, got too. got a notepad wow. ready to go. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yo, this is I'm a little bit more old school. I love this. I love this. I love this, man. And you know what? Um, and that's one of the reasons why I reached out to you guys in regards to doing this interview, because I remember when we did uh, the sound session for Ellipsis, like you guys um, are people that, that not only do you take hip hop seriously, but you take your your, your um, position seriously as, as far as being radio DJs. And I think that we've uh, come to a time period where campus radio seems to be like the only outlet where you find um, DJs that actually care enough about the music to actually do research on the projects and l- let the music soak in with them, you know? Well, here's the one thing that we were talking about upstairs is that for people who, because there's a lot of messages in this album, for yeah. people who want to know about the messages, they're going to go out and look for it and search for it. I know I had to do that for a lot because there was a lot of stuff that I didn't quite understand yeah. and uh, it took a little digging. I got a shovel and I was digging away, <laughs> but I think I found some of the stuff I was looking for. But... Um, so before we get into any of the tracks, we're, um, uh, the way that we kind of structured this is we're going to split it up into like a quarter of the album. I think there's 14 tracks, uh, <laughs> including the intro itself. So yeah. we're just going to, I think I broke it up fairly at some nice high points where there's like a nice twist at the end. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it then. But uh, just at a high level, how did how did uh, recording this album compare to recording anything that you've done with Politic Live? Uh, this process here Well one thing that you'll notice With every album that I, that I do um, Whether it's this Politic Lab or, or as Mahogany Public Or even Arlo Maverick Is that it's always A collaborative effort um, I tend to surround myself With people who I feel Will um, allow me to uh, Present my art In, in the best uh, The best the best uh, Delivery and presentation That it can possibly uh, Be delivered to people with And a lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm tapping into A lot of these Talents of other people That uh, teach me along the way but at the same time they'll help make a better product and so um, if you look back all the way to uh, Notoriety like we uh, worked with a lot of different people Adaptation once again worked with a lot of people um, Adaptation was the first project that we ever really uh, actually no the double album the double album the MFM double album was the first time we really began to work closely with um, with Uzi and incorporating him into the family and then k as well too from Adaptation time period so even with this project here like it was a situation where um, I guess how it would differ is um, is that Gritty and, and Bigger and Roe were pretty much, they were still part of the process, but it was like they were kind of outliers in the sense of uh, assisting when, when, I, when I needed them. It wasn't a situation of them always being there, me having to bounce ideas off them uh, right in that moment. It was more a situation of, yo, I need help with a line. And, and 
the same thing we, we would do before where it's like I call them up and like kick a line to them and they'd be like well yo why don't you say this you know and then it's like yo because sometimes that a person can spark an idea even if they don't necessarily give you the idea there's something that they'll say that sparks the idea and what's interesting is I remember I was out in Toronto this is actually what, what, what another thing that's different is the fact that I was out in Toronto um, for I believe it was nine days just uh, at my cousin's place and um, that's where I did like a bulk of the writing and I remember calling back to Edmonton and calling Bigger and Bigger's a sports fan right so on Too Many Twos there's a line where I say um, most women I know think they're in control the miss the pick and roll you give then he goes he pivots the pinnacle he won't give up rings but you give up your goals I didn't know what to say when it came up to the because I came up with the up to the line of uh, uh, he, he you won't give up uh, he won't give up he won't give up rings but uh, he won't I'm messing up my own line now right <laughs> He won't give up rings, but you give up your goals. And that was me calling up Big and being like, yo, Big, because Big is a baller, right? So I knew he would have the right line. And so I call him up and I'm just like, yo. And then he mentioned something to me. I'm like, yo, dude, I got it, you know? And it was like, conversation was done. Yeah. Back to writing, you know? So, yeah. I hope I answered your question without being too uh, rambly, you know? <laughs> typical, uh, <laughs> typical Argo fashion. <laughs> Now this album was a lot of a lot of it. The ideas basically came back in 2011, 2012, and like you said, you were talking, you were in Toronto when this kind of idea hit you. Yeah. What spurred it on that it was Toronto that kind of gave you that hit that this is what should I should do next? Um, uh, well, the the idea of creating the album came while being here in Edmonton, but um, I felt that I had to. Uh, I felt I had to go elsewhere and create something and it wasn't because of Edmonton not being a great place for inspiration it's uh, provided so much inspiration for albums um, and gr uh, great songs and great moments but it's one of those things where um, as you get older there's more responsibilities and more accountability that you have towards family and friends and being here I can't focus on recording an album and be Marlon Wilson in Edmonton because guess what this family member needs this or this friend needs this or, or hey Arlo can we get together and chill and stuff like that but if I'm not there then you can't get a hold of me you know mm -hmm. and in Toronto like my family out there like they, they understand the, 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 the family that I stay with they understand and a lot of my family understands that I'm very much about my arts it'll give me that space because whenever I see them it's usually hey I'm in town for a couple of days can I crash here can I stay here so they understand that and they gave me that space that I needed for me to be able to just like wake up in the morning um, and and write, leave the house to go hop on on, on uh, the TTC and just write, you know, um, staying up to who knows how, when, how long, you know, just walking in the neighborhood, writing on my phone and stuff like that, you know, so I had that, that uh, and never did I have to do anything because I have no responsibilities out there. Okay, know? fair enough, makes sense. Um, one of the biggest questions that we had was uh, the title. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Yes. What does that mean to you? Because we have some meanings to us, and like when we <laughs> say that for the end, for the last track. <laughs> all right, we can do that now. Well, we'll talk about the track when we come to the track, but just as an overall album title, yeah. Um, what's word on this name? Uh, what's funny is that, um, and this, it, I wish it, there was like a beautiful meaning for behind the name, but uh, there's no real beautiful meaning except for this. Um, Many years ago, I heard the Jackson 5 song, Baby Tomorrow, uh, which was originally written for Sammy Davis Jr., but they ended up getting the song, and it's a beautiful song, one of my favorite songs of all time. And um, what's interesting is that uh, that song there, when, I, when Ghostface did All I Got Is You, like, I originally wanted to sample that, and no other rapper had done that before. Then all of a sudden, like, like maybe three months after I heard the song, Ghostface sampled it. And I'm just like, how dare this guy do this? You know, I was supposed to have that sample, you know? And it's one of those things where it's a, it's, it's a great idea, and I'm surprised nobody uh, did it before Ghostface. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to explore that, but I always liked that that song. And so um, we were in the studio one time, and this is back in like Notoriety days, and, and while we were working on Notoriety, we were also working on bigger and gritty solo projects because we had this, this whole like Wu-Tang thing where like, yo, all right, you're going to go with and then, then Gritty's gonna go then I'm gonna go and then we'll come back and do another group album and so on and so forth and what of uh, our dudes that was there asked he was like yo so when when are you dropping your, your solo project I'm like in 2007 you know and he's like okay he's like what are you gonna call it I'm like I don't know maybe tomorrow you know and that name just like was something that I joked about because everyone always asked when are you coming out with a solo project but I never wanted to do a solo project so I would always say maybe tomorrow so eventually it became a title that people just expected me to do an album called maybe tomorrow and then 
the story of it kind of came together, you know? That is totally different from the answer we were coming up with upstairs. We were sitting there going, okay, so this must mean something to Soup. What the hell does this mean to Soup? Is he well, like- it does, it does, it does. But that's, but that's that came about later. In the beginning, it was just like one of those things where it's like something that you say and, and there's arbitrary and doesn't mean anything, but it eventually took on meaning, you know? Okay, we'll talk about that at the, at the end. <laughs> <laughs> With that, do you just want to get into this music then? All right, let's see what we've got. Okay, so we're going to play the first four tracks, and we're going to come back, and we will uh, break this all down for everybody. Um, just off the top, is this the... Now, you've been doing a lot of promoting for this album. Yeah. Is this the first time it's going to be played in its entirety on air, live? First time yeah. in its entirety, man. Yeah, I told you, you guys always get the specialty, man. When no, when Ellipsis was played for the first time, it's in, in its entirety, which was you guys, yeah. you know? We love the Buffet exclusive. <laughs> Okay, let's eat. Hip-hop buffet. <laughs> <laughs> 